Okay, I want to share something interesting that I've discovered recently, and it involves the Gilbreth Principle, and it involves changing one of the assumptions just slightly, and then looking at what are the consequences of not quite meeting one of the requirements for the Gilbreth Principle to apply. Okay, so what am I talking about here? So what I have here is I have a pretty much an entire deck, one card missing, I think, it alternates red-black throughout. But as I mentioned to you, I'm missing one card. Well, because of that, well, I'm doing it on purpose here, right? I'm leaving out one card. So what we're looking at here is not technically cyclic, as in the requirement for the Gilbreth principle. Okay, now if we remove this, it would be, because this is red-black, red-black all the way through. Okay, so it needs to be cyclic, quote, going around corners. So if you imagine these all lined up in a circle. Well, the moment I put this extra red here at the bottom, it's not cyclic. So I have a red and red next to each other. One at the top, one at the bottom. So this arrangement's no longer truly cyclic. But it misses it just by a little bit, okay? So what's the consequence of tweaking this requirement for the application of the Gilbreth principle? Well, that's the fun part that I wanted to share with you. and. And there's probably many ways to make use of this. I can think of a simple card matching game that would be fun based on the properties of this Gilbreth Shuffle Packet in just a moment. Okay, so if you're familiar with the Gilbreth Principle, you, ne you need a cyclic arrangement of the cards. Kind of have that up to a small violation here on the bottom. And you then need to reverse count. This is part of the Gilbreth Shuffle involves really just two steps. You reverse count any number, any number of cards whatsoever. Okay, it can be one of them, none of them, all of them. Okay, and then you perform anything that's equivalent to a riffle shuffle. Okay, so a riffle shuffle is where you, you let these fall left, right, left, right, how they may. Okay, uh, you can also do a rosette shuffle where you spin them. Okay. Um, in fact, I thought we would try to just do a massive, <laughs> a humongous rosette shuffle. Okay, and then we'll just kind of bring these together. And in some ways, these are kind of nice visually because the spectator can see that nobody is controlling how those cards are interlacing. I mean, it's just a, sorry, it's a big old mess. Okay, now with the Gilbreth principle tells us about the ending structure here. And so let's say, let's just make a game out of it right off. Okay. So let's say we give the spectator the choice to have winning pairs be pairs of cards of the same color or pairs of cards of opposite color. And you can have them freely make that choice. So they can say, I, a winning pair for me will be a pair of cards of the same color. So that's what they're shooting for. And then you might say, okay, well, I'll, I'll do the same thing as you, but since you were able to choose what's a winning pair for both of us here, um, I think I'll choose to work from the bottom looking for our pairs. And then you get to work from the top looking for pairs. Okay, so uh, if I remember right, a winning pair for you, you said would be cards of the same color. So let's just see if you got any. Uh, nope, those are opposite colors, so no points there. That's a fail. That's a fail. Sounds a little harsh. A fail. A fail. Oh man, what is going on? You're, you didn't get any so far. I mean, surely your luck's going to turn uh, oh, you got a couple of jacks. It's kind of nice. But they need to be of the same color to be, quote, a winning pair for you. Oh, different colors. Different colors. Oh, different colors. Now, for those familiar with the Gilbreth principle, um, you, you're not surprised by this. Uh, in fact, it guarantees that pairs of cards taken from the top will have to consist of one red and one black in some order. Okay, we won't know the order necessarily, but okay. So it looks like you got a big zero okay, as far as pairs, okay? So the fact that the spectator um, essentially lost or, or did, not, did not win any points, I guess I could still lose as the performer. We'll check to see how I did in just, just a second, but uh, technically the spectator got zero matches, okay? 
And then what I decided to go with is just go with what they said. They said a winning pair for them will be cards of the same color. That will be true for me, but I'll work from the bottom instead of from the top. So let's see how I did. Okay, that's not a winning pair. It's zero, zero. Oh, I got one. Nope, nope, yep, nope. Yep. Nope. Uh, no, 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 no. Yes. Yes. No, 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 no. Yes. No. Yes. Uh, no, no. And of course, a single card can't be a match with anything. Okay, so it looks like I got two, four, six, seven. I got seven matching pairs. So what was your number again? How many did you get? Oh, oh, that's right. You got zero. Okay. Well, last time uh, I checked, seven is bigger than zero. So I think I actually won that challenge. Okay. So how this will work if you use a cyclic packet like I have, where it breaks that pattern just at the bottom card. Okay, so you have it alternate red black throughout or black red throughout, but just be sure that the top card and the bottom card are actually the same color. So you will have an odd size packet. You'll have an odd number of cards, not an even for this. Okay, and so that's the violation, the small violation of the requirements for the Gilbreth principle to apply. Okay. And what I'm showing you here is it leads to something quite interesting because taken from the top, it's as if you have not violated that rule at all. The standard conclusion of the Gilbreth principle is in force, so unchanged. But if you look for, let's say, matching pairs of cards from the bottom, you just turn the deck over and look for them from the bottom, you are guaranteed to get at least one you can check this, if not more. Now I got seven, I believe, okay? And so the number of matching pairs, it will differ from shuffle to shuffle. It will really just depend on how those cards were riffle shuffled or rosette shuffled together. But since you are guaranteed to get at least one matching pair working from the bottom, you know that that will always beat the zero matching pairs from the top, okay? So here, here's a summary. Uh, the person who chooses to work from the top, and that's what happened with the spectator, we allowed the spectator to choose what was a winning pair. So it's like we're showing them the courtesy of they get to choose that first. And then I said, well, once that's chosen, I'll do the same as you. But now I should be given at least one free choice. So I'm going to choose to work from the bottom, from the bottom of the deck. Okay. So the spectator here was given the top to work with and the spectator was looking for matching color pairs and there will not be any, right? All of them will be non-matching, okay? So the spectator was guaranteed to lose and I was guaranteed to win, maybe only one point against zero points, uh, but possibly more. Here was seven to zero. So it really comes down to what color pairs the person who is assigned the top to work with goes with. So if you're assigned the top or choose to work from the top and you go with non-matching color pairs as winning pairs, so you're looking for cards of opposite color, and if they are as a winning pair, you will always win. You will win every single one of those pairs. Working from the top still, if your winning pair requirement is that the cards be of the same color, then you're guaranteed to lose, as was the case in the performance here. So anyway, I thought it would be fun to put this out here. I haven't seen anyone. Um, it may be known that with the Gilbreth principle, if you tweak one of the requirements, it leads to certain interesting outcomes. I have no idea. I haven't seen anyone do what I'm showing you here today. It may be out there already. Maybe someone's done it. If so, I've rediscovered it, which is fine. So thank you for watching and take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.